No matter what kind of camera you're using, one of the easiest ways to improve your video quality is to replace the microphone. But popular microphones like the DJI Mic and the Rode Wireless Go or Pro are notoriously expensive. So here I have four budget dual channel wireless microphone systems to test, and they range in price from $99 to $179. We're gonna see just how they stack up in terms of size, features, and most importantly, sound quality. And I do think that there is one that stands out above the rest. Now, in case you know nothing about wireless microphones, these are my favorite to use because the transmitters have a microphone built in and I can be pretty far away from the camera, even turn around, have my back facing the camera, and yet you should still be able to hear my voice. So that's why I prefer wireless microphones as opposed to regular on-camera microphones. First, here are the contenders. The Ulanzi U-Mic AM18, the Hohem Mic 1, the Ceramonic Blink 500 B2 Plus, and the Hollyland Lark M2. All of these mic systems are relatively new. The Ulanzi came out in 2023, but the rest all came out in the first couple months of 2024. Now, before I talk about differences, let's talk about some common features. Each mic system comes with a receiver for a camera, two wireless mic transmitters, and charging cases. Now, these mic systems are compatible with cameras via the 3.5 millimeter TRS output, plus phones via USB-C or Lightning, and computers. Now, given the price point, these are not professional microphones in that they won't have pro-level settings, such as 32-bit float and timecode, but they are relatively easy for anyone to use. Now, later on in this video, I will do a brief sound comparison between the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro, but there won't be an in-depth comparison of these to these microphones. Now for the comparison point, starting with price. Cheapest is the Ulanzi at $99, followed by the Hohem at $109, the Ceramonic at $130, and the Hollyland at $179. Although the Hollyland is the only one here that offers different bundles at different price points. It's $179 for the combo kit with the receiver for the camera, plus dedicated receivers for USB-C and Lightning. Now the latter two options are cheaper, so if you don't need the dedicated camera receiver, then the price goes down even more. But generally speaking, the cheaper microphones do mean that certain features have been dialed down or even excluded. So you get what you pay for. First up is the type of sound that each microphone system records. Now the Ulanzi, Ceramonic, and Hollyland can all record in mono, stereo, or safety track audio but the Hohem can only record in mono audio. Now, if you don't know what all these audio types are, I have a dedicated video that explains each one. But personally, I prefer to always record in stereo audio, especially when I'm using two wireless transmitters, because that way I can control the audio levels of each microphone in post-production. Now, again, there's more info on the pros and cons of each audio type in my dedicated video. Next, let's talk size and appearance. All of these mic kits are relatively small and compact. The Ulanzi and the Ceramonic are the biggest and heaviest of the bunch. The Ceramonic charging case is a bit bigger and heavier, at 141 grams versus 128.5 grams for the Ulanzi. But the receiver is a bit lighter at 30 grams compared to 34.5 grams for the Ulanzi. Both the Ceramonic and Ulanzi transmitters weigh 23 grams, but I personally prefer the sleeker look of the Ceramonic. The Hohem and the Hollylin are definitely the smallest of the bunch. The charging case of the Hohem is by far the lightest, coming in at 76 grams compared to 111 grams for the Hollyland. And the Hohem receiver weighs just 5 grams compared to 14.8 grams for the Hollyland. However, the Hollylin's transmitter is the lightest and smallest transmitter that I've ever seen on any microphone system coming in at 9 grams compared to 14.9 grams for the Hohem. But because the Hohem and the Hollyland are the smallest, both of them had to make some sacrifices to keep that compact form factor. For the Hohem, the receiver is so small because it doesn't have an actual power source, so it technically doesn't even need to be charged. However, that means that you do need to add your own power source to use the Hohem. Now out of the box, you can plug the Hohem receiver into a USB-C phone or camera and use the connected mics as is. But if you want to use the Hohem with a big camera, like a mirrorless camera, 
then you need to add your own power source for the receiver. And you have to plug it into something like a battery power bank or a gimbal and then connect it to your camera of choice. So in terms of connection and usage, the Hohem may not be the most flexible or convenient, depending on what kind of camera that you're going to film on. Battery life is another area that the Hohem and Hollyland have less of because of their smaller sizes. The Hohem transmitter has a seven and a half hour battery life. There's no battery life for the Hohem receiver because it doesn't have a power source. While the Hollyland transmitter and receiver each last about 10 hours. Now, meanwhile, since the Uvanzi and the Saramonix are bigger, they have quite a bit more battery life. The Saramonic transmitter lasts for about 20 hours, compared to 14 for the Ulanzi, and the Saramonic receiver lasts 16 hours, compared to 14 hours for the Ulanzi. So Saramonic by far has the best battery life, while Hohem has the least. Now, because of their small sizes, the Hohem and the Hollyland receivers have very basic displays with LED lights to show you status. The Hohem even depends on audio signals to fully show you what level of noise reduction and gain that you're using. So learning how to use the Hohem and the Hollyland mic systems have a bit of a learning curve. Meanwhile, the Ulanzi and the Ceremonic receivers both have screens to show you what settings are active on your mics and also to set and control the settings. The Ceremonic receiver does not have a touch screen. You have to use the buttons to cycle through the menu. But the Ulanzi receiver has a touch screen which makes navigation a lot easier. However, the Ceremonic comes with adapters to easily attach the receivers to a mobile device. While with the Ulanzi, you need to connect the receiver to a phone with a cable and find a place to attach the receiver to the phone. All of these mic kits come with two transmitters, each with built-in microphones. The Ulanzi, Saramonic, and Hohem transmitters all have clips to easily attach to a shirt collar. And all of them, except for the Ulanzi, have a magnet for more discreet attachment. The Hollyland transmitter does come with both a magnet and clip attachments, but they are loose and they must be attached separately. It even comes with a necklace with a magnetic mount. So in a way, all of this is more convenient because you only use what you need in the moment. But it also means that there are more small pieces to keep track of and possibly lose. Also, the clip leaves the transmitter really loose, so it's hard to lock it into position. And with all of these different attachments, it is so easy to accidentally position the microphone away from your intended subject. So you have to pay extra attention when putting it on your subject. Each transmitter also comes with optional windscreens that you can add to cover the microphones to prevent wind noise. I find that the windscreen attachments vary in quality and ease of attachment. The Hohem windscreen feels a bit flimsy, while the Hollyland windscreen is really big compared to the transmitter itself, and thus it's quite hard to attach. I also found the Ceramonic windscreen to be very difficult to attach. So the Ulanzi windscreen is the only one that I could easily attach and didn't have a problem with. Before I tell you more about how the transmitter features compare, let's talk a little bit more about microphone placement, which is one of the many skills that you're going to need when you're filming a video. Now, if you're considering buying a budget microphone kit, I'm going to assume that you're a beginner when it comes to filmmaking. And if that's the case, the sponsor of this video could really help you out. They certainly could have helped me out when I was first getting started. Skillshare is an on-demand platform with thousands of classes taught by industry professionals. Skillshare has classes in a variety of categories, including creative writing, graphic design, music, photography, and even marketing and productivity. Whether you wanna learn how to film on a budget, how to be more confident on camera, or how to edit your videos on various platforms, including CapCut, Final Cut, or Resolve, there's so much to learn on Skillshare. I actually need to take a proper course on CapCut because I've been using it more and more to edit my shorts and my reels. And I honestly just know the bare basics of the app. So with CapCut as an example, I could take a short one-off course if I'm on a time crunch, or I could choose the learning path, which features a bunch of classes meant to be taken in order, with each building on the other. So I can learn not only how to edit on my phone, but also on my desktop. Wait, CapCut has a desktop app? I actually didn't even know that. So apparently I really do need to take this class. 
So if you guys want to try out Skillshare for yourself, I'll see you there. You can use my link below. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue on with transmitter feature comparisons. The next transmitter feature is the wired lavalier microphone port. Now this is a feature that you always see on high-end wireless microphone systems, like the Rode and DJI microphones. But on these budget mics, it's a 50-50 chance if you'll get it. The Olanzi and the Hoham mics each have wired lavalier mic inputs, while the Ceramonic and the Hollyland do not. Now not everyone needs this feature. It actually costs a bit more money because you'll have to buy your own wired lav mic to use it. But it can be nice for enhancing the audio quality and also appearing more discreet. Because if you attach a wired lavalier microphone to your subject, it is way less noticeable than clipping on the entire transmitter. Speaking of appearance, that's one more thing worth mentioning. Because the Olanzi is so large, it's not exactly the best looking transmitter especially with this touch of silver that draws more attention to it. Now the Ceramonic and the Hohem transmitters are much more discreet, but the Hollyland is by far the least noticeable. Not only is it exceptionally small, but it also comes with stickers, so you can cover up the front logo. I don't know of any other wireless mic systems that include custom stickers to do that. Let's also talk about onboard recording, which lets you use the transmitter as a standalone voice recorder or to create backup audio. Now, like the wired lavalier microphone port, this is a feature that comes with almost all high-end wireless mic systems, but it's 50-50 on budget mic systems. The Ceramonic and the Hollyland do not have onboard recording, but the Hohem and the Ulanzi do. On the Hohem, it's a feature that you'll only get if you insert your own micro SD card into the transmitter. Now this ability to add your own memory card is actually a unique feature in itself that I have not seen on any other wireless microphone systems. But it would be a welcome addition because this way you can control how much storage is available on your transmitter. On the Ulanzi on the other hand, you get 8 gigabytes of onboard storage built into the transmitter, which is a good amount, especially considering that the Ulanzi is just $99. The final transmitter feature that I'll mention is the ability to use it as a remote control to trigger the shutter on a camera. Now only two microphone systems can do this, the Hohem and the Hollyland, and it is limited to working with smartphones only, but it's a super useful feature that can save you some money because that way you won't have to buy a remote shutter for your camera. Now before we move on to battery life and sound quality, let's talk transmission distance, or how far away the wireless transmitters can be from the receiver slash camera. The cheaper microphones are more limited. Both the Olanzi and Hohem have a maximum transmission distance of 100 meters, line of sight. The Ceramonic adds a bit more, capping out at 150 meters while the Hollylin doubles the Ceramonic at 300 meters. This actually puts it ahead of the Rode Wireless Pro and the DJI Mic 2, which is pretty ridiculous for such a tiny microphone system. All right, let's get to the sound quality. Now to really hear the differences, you wanna to listen to this with a pair of high quality headphones. All of these audio samples are straight out of the camera, unedited. So let's do a sound test, starting with a baseline test of this camera, the built-in microphones. This is the DJI Pocket 3. We are an arm's length away from the camera, and this is what it sounds like. Next up, we're testing out the DJI Mic 2 transmitter, so using the built-in microphone on this transmitter. No low-cut filter, no noise cancellation. This is what it sounds like. Now this is an audio test of the Rode Wireless Pro using the built-in microphone on the transmitter. There's no low-cut filter. There's also no noise cancellation that's even available on this microphone, so we won't be testing that feature out. This is what it sounds like coming straight out of this transmitter. This is a sound test of the Ulanzi microphone. So we're using the built-in microphone on the transmitter along with that furry windscreen. There is also no noise reduction, I believe. If there is, I'm not able to turn it on or off. But uh, one complaint I do have about this microphone so far, which I'll go into in more detail about, is that I cannot do the firmware update for it because I have a Mac computer and apparently that's not available right now. So that is one downside to the Ulanzi. 
Next up, we're testing out the built-in microphone on the Holly Lynn Lark M2 transmitter. Again, with the furry windscreen attached, but no low-cut filter, no noise cancellation. This is what it sounds like directly out of the microphone transmitter. This is a sound test with the Hohem Mic 1 using the built-in microphone on the transmitter. We have no noise cancellation enabled, but there are actually two different levels that we can activate for noise cancellation. So we will test them out later, but this is what it sounds like directly out of the transmitter with no extra effects on the sound. This is a sound test of the Ceramonic microphone using the built-in microphone on the transmitter along with the windscreen. There is no low-cut filter, no noise cancellation. This is what it sounds like directly coming out of the transmitter microphone. All right, analysis time. Now I'm no audio expert, but to my untrained ears, the Rode has the richest sound quality, followed by the DJI Mic 2. Now, besides some pro-level features, it really is the audio quality that you're paying for in these more expensive microphone systems. But as far as the budget microphones, I really like the audio quality of the Hollyland. I thought it sounded richer than that of the Ceramonic, but the Ceramonic audio quality definitely comes in second for me. In my opinion, the Olanzi microphone did a decent job, but I do hear a lot of background noise, so the voice isolation isn't as good. Plus, the audio quality just lacks some richness compared to the Ceramonic and the Hollyland. Finally, the Hohem came in last for me. It just wasn't the greatest. Now, all of these microphones, except for Ulanzi, have optional noise reduction that you can activate by pressing a button on the transmitter. Let's take a listen. All right, another sound test with the DJI Pocket 3 only using the internal microphones. We want to uh, do a noise reduction test now with all these microphones. So this is the baseline test. Now this is a sound test with the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. We have noise reduction turned off right now, but I will go ahead and turn it on so you can hear the difference. So now with noise reduction turned on on the DJI Mic 2, fire truck going by. That is pretty noisy, so I'd love to hear how effective that noise reduction is. And yeah, that's what it sounds like. Next up, we're testing the Rode Wireless Pro. So the Rode Wireless Pro does not have a noise reduction setting, so this is as good as we're going to get uh, recording directly to uh, the microphone or to the camera. But if we go into our video editing software, we can actually add noise reduction of our own in post-production. So that's an option with the road if you do want the noise reduction applied to your sound. This is a test of the Ulanzi wireless microphone using that built-in microphone. Uh, again, I don't believe that there's noise reduction because I'm not able to do the firmware update on this mic, but this is what it sounds like in a rather noisy environment. And like the Rode, you can actually add your own noise reduction in post if you really want to. This is a sound test with the Hohem Mic 1. There is no noise reduction. We're filming straight at a camera in a rather noisy environment. But I will go ahead and start adding different levels of noise reduction. So this is the Hohem with normal noise reduction applied. This is what it sounds like straight out of the camera. And we will also add the stronger form of noise reduction next. So this is the strongest form of noise reduction on the Hohem. This is what it sounds like recording using the built-in microphone on the transmitter. This is a sound test with the Hollyland Lark M2 using the uh, built-in microphone as well as the windscreen. We have no noise reduction applied, but I will go ahead and add it. So once again, this is the Hollyland Lark M2 with noise reduction applied, and this is what it sounds like recording using that built-in microphone on the transmitter. This is a sound test in a rather noisy environment with the Hollyland. This is a sound test with a ceramonic microphone using the built-in microphone on the transmitter. No noise reduction. We're recording straight out of camera. And now we're going to go ahead and add noise reduction. This is the weak form of noise reduction on the ceramonic. There is a stronger form of noise reduction as well, which I will test next. But this is the weak noise reduction on the ceramonic microphone. So this is a sound test with the strong form of noise reduction on the Ceramonic microphone. This is what it sounds like. Recording directly into the transmitter, straight out of camera, 
in a rather noisy environment with lots of traffic around me. This is what it sounds like. I personally don't think it sounds very good on any of these microphones. You can easily add your own noise reduction in post-production, and this gives you much more control over how much noise reduction is applied. So I recommend going that route instead of relying on built-in noise reduction in a microphone, because once it's there, it's really hard to take it away. Now, after taking into account price, size, features, and sound quality, let's draw some conclusions about the best budget wireless microphone system. If you want the absolute best sound quality, I would go for the HollyLens, or possibly even the Ceramonic, if you need more features like an OLED display on the receiver and a physical clip on the transmitter. But if you want a ton of pro-level features and you don't mind sacrificing some sound quality, then the Ulanzi U-Mic wins by a long shot. It's the only microphone system here that has built-in onboard recording without having to add your own media storage. And it lets you plug in your own wired lavalier microphone. Those are two features that you won't get on the Hollyland or the Ceramonic. But these are my thoughts and conclusions. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. If you agree with my assessments, or if you think another one of these microphones is better, or if there's another budget microphone that I haven't talked about that you think is better. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.